Hello, my name is Taylor and I have been offering a Monarch Money personal tutorials since the beginning of the year, as a lot of people have been flocking from Mint to uh, Monarch, which is a great choice, good job. But uh, these tutorials have been really awesome and I've gotten a question almost about 50% of them, 50% uh, of the time. Uh, should I download my Mint transactions? Should I bother moving my Mint transactions into Monarch? And this is a very personal question. It really depends on the situation. So I wanted to walk you through a couple scenarios. If you're sit kind of sitting on the fence, not sure what you're, if you really want to download it, or maybe you have downloaded and you're running into some issues. Uh, so I'll show you how to troubleshoot a couple of those issues, but mostly, mostly just how to reverse it. If you decide, Hey, uh, maybe I don't want to deal with this because there are some, there is some headache when you download the Mint transactions. While they do make it very seamless to do uh, Monarch because giving you guys a Chrome extension. They have the CSV file fairly, uh, fairly intuitive, very seamless. I, I found it very easy to use when I've helped my clients download the CSV file. I haven't used the Chrome extension yet, but uh, I found it a fairly simple process. There are some headaches, um, some, uh, you know, issues with some, some, sometimes running into like duplicate transactions, uh, categories that really don't make sense in Monarch because it's just not the way Monarch functions anymore. Um, but uh, that is really, again, it is kind of a personal personal choice of whether you add a uh, mint transactions to your Monarch. And so uh, here's a couple questions to ask yourself, okay? Is have you been using Mint diligently for years and years? You've been categorizing, you've been uh, in Mint, Mint like every week, kind of looking through everything, cleaning it up, making sure it's as accurate as possible. If that is the case, go ahead and try to download the Mint transactions. You may run into duplicates because that's an issue with like, uh, if you choose to prioritize uh, the, uh, I think it's the Mint transactions over your bank, which I think is the one that's recommended, whichever one's recommended. Um, there are some issues with like, maybe the dates just slightly don't line up. And so you and run up and run into duplicate transactions. I don't see that every single time when I've been downloading Mint transactions, but I do see it every once in a while. I'm not sure what the difference is. And so if you run into that, uh, it can be a little annoying but uh, you know uh, the Monarch team does have solutions to work through. They do have offers to troubleshoot this, but uh, I have had clients just say like, hey, I don't really want to deal with this anymore. Let's just move on. Let's get rid of them and uh, just move on fresh start because I don't wanna really want to bother trying to clean this up. Um, but if you have been using it diligently, go ahead and download them. If you have not been, if you have been using Mint like maybe once a month, you've been uh, checking in, just kind of getting an overall report of ca uh, expenses versus income, I would not bother with it. Like you probably have a lot of transactions and categories that you do not need or do not use, like one transaction that's fallen into like a miscellaneous category, right? Um, if you have those, I just I just really wouldn't bother with the headache. Uh, I, mean, I mean, reference Mint, look through your data as it moves to Credit Karma. Uh, as you go forward and set uh, set spending goals for the future, uh, it's still important to see that data, but it's probably not very clean. And so I don't know why you'd want to bother moving it and cluttering a, a new system if we're starting fresh and starting with, uh, you know, maybe new goals and new, uh, new financial goals. So... The other question is, will seeing past trends help you stay on track towards your future goals? Like if you have been, uh, you know, working really hard to pay off debt, increase your net worth and to start fresh to not see that data in your cash flow would be super disheartening. Um, I would then I would absolutely download the mint transactions, the balances and the transactions. I think that would be very helpful for you to stay on track. Uh, if, again, if not, if you don't really care, if you're like, eh, things have been kind of all over the place, or maybe I'm still working on those goals and I haven't seen much progress so far anyway, and I want to, you know, start fresh, go ahead and do that. Give you permission. Uh, if you need to see past transactions to create a budget, uh, which everyone does need to, uh, you do need to be able to see what your average spending has been. Uh, in order to make decisions. You cannot set a grocery budget based on uh, your wants and hopes and dreams. You need to set it based on what is a reality for you and your family. So if you've been spending, you know, $1,500 a month on groceries and you're setting a goal to spend $800, you have some very serious work to do. This means uh, meal prepping quite a bit. This means uh, hiring a meal prepping service or spending way more time uh, planning your food, uh, cooking food, and it might not be time you have. And so is that actually a realistic spending goal? And it might not be for you. So you do need to see past trends, trends and transactions. However, if you connect your bank accounts to Monarch, most bank accounts pull in quite a bit of data. Now, some accounts only pull in like a couple of weeks, 
uh, some are pulling in a year's worth of transactions. And if that's the case, you can get a pretty good idea of where your spending has been. And it might not be perfect. Like you might not know, you know, what those Amazon purchases were or if the target run was for groceries or if it was just for general shopping. You might not know these things, but uh, it can give you a good idea to start with. And that's what I've been using with my clients. Most of my clients who start out with me were not, at least at the start, a lot of them are now, you know, been doing um, budgeting for a while. But uh, when they first started out, they weren't really tracking their expenses ever. This is a brand new process for them. And so we did the best we could with uh, looking at past trends and we did great. So, and it worked out fine. So, I mean, it's possible to get a, just a general baseline so that you can set budgets going forward. Uh, but if you um, need those past transactions. If you've, you know, organized it again, you've been organizing it quite a bit and you need to be able to see those, uh, what you kind of spent on even, uh, certain things like a move, maybe you're moving every few years and you want to make sure you track how much these moves are costing, uh, so that you can be planning for future moves. You would absolutely want to bring that data in. If you have a trip that you take every you know year, you might want to see how much those trip, that trip actually costs. So you can budget for in the future and you may want a record of it and how it's changed year over year go ahead and move your data into mint or into monarch like see if you can if you can make that uh make that transition uh so those are some of the scenarios where you may want your mint data and uh it, it would absolutely be worth it again if you if none of that stuff applied to you don't do it start fresh i give you permission just you know let the past be let it go uh it might be an emotional uh disconnect but it will be okay we can mourn it properly and move on um, if you moved, use way too many categories in Mint and were really frustrated by this, that was one of the biggest reasons I did not love Mint, especially for my clients. It's just there's too many categories. There was way too many areas where uh, expense could go. And I just felt like it was just so cluttered and did not give you the data that you actually needed to make financial decisions. Um, if you were frustrated by this, now uh, it's very easy to move and delete categories, but it's also a pain in the butt. It will probably take you, uh, you know, an hour or two to clean up your categories, especially if you watch my video on how to set up your categories in Mint or in, sorry, in Monarch, then uh, you will have a new structure of how you're going to organize this very different from what Mint uh, was doing prior. And so it may take you quite a while to clean those up. Uh, and so, the, you know, that's just a warning. So if you don't want to spend the time cleaning that up, then maybe again, let it go, let the past be and move on. So if you have decided to download your Mint uh, transactions and you regret it and you're kind of having second thoughts, it was a little too cluttered, there's duplicates, there's errors, and you're just like, hey, I don't want to deal with this. Um, because again, like I said, there are some things that are, are reportedly going wrong with these transfers. It does not happen every time. I've had clients very successfully move everything over and not everything works out. Um, there's sometimes where it's duplicated. It's... Uh, or it's there's other issues going on. They don't find the transactions correctly. The dates might be a little off. Um, and I, I honestly don't know how to fix those. That's something the Monarch team would need to help you with. Uh, but if you are thinking that I don't want to wait for the Monarch team and I don't want to deal with this and I don't even need this data anyway because I've answered no to most of those questions that Taylor just asked me, um, then I will show you how to kind of reverse this. So what you can do is you are going to find your transactions list and you're going to scroll down to more options right here on the side here, the filter and sort side here. We're going to scroll down and so you can see uh, imported from Mint. If you click on this, it'll pull up all of the transactions you have imported from Mint. Uh, if you uh, edit multiple, you can click on the box here that will select all of them. It'll select all of them. This could be uh, hundreds of transactions for you. You can click edit and you can delete it. You can just delete it. It can be gone forever. Now, the problem is, is if you did this and it created a whole bunch of categories from your old uh, transactions, then those will still be there, unfortunately. But it'll be so much easier to get rid of them now that all the transactions attached to them are gone. Because if you remember correctly, um, when you go to deactivate a group, uh, it's very easy if there are no transactions labeled as gifts. It will be very easy to just click disable and you'll just have to do it one by one going down the list. Um, and that can be a little tedious. But when there is a transaction there and you press deactivate, um, it's going to make you move all six of these. So it's sometimes really easy. Like uh, if you are getting rid of the coffee budget, it's very easy to just reassign everything to restaurants because that's a pretty clear, you know, that's probably where most of these are going to go. But if it's not quite that simple, if there's like some interesting categories, you're like, I don't even know what's in there. Um, you may have to click on this to uh, go through and sort the sort through the expenses to figure out what they actually are. Now, 
If you get tired of that, I do just recommend when you delete a category, if you don't, if you don't know what it is, you don't know what it wants to go to, you just want to get rid of it. I would just assign it as uncategorized. Um, the reason why, or miscellaneous, either one. The reason why is that this way it will still show up uh, as an expense, you know, of those transactions, but it won't, so it will still be accurate when you look at your cash flow for like the last few months, because uh, uncategorized and miscellaneous will still show up as cash flow. If you mark it as anything else, or if you just deleted them, and it's going to kind of screw up your cash flow report. So um, that is just a quick, but again, remember uh, that you have a uh, video on how to redo your categories, how to set them up and organize them in the way that really makes sense. That's been really working well for my clients. And so if you want to review that, go for it. If you are still on the fence or you're looking for more guidance, more one-on-one, -on -one, uh, feedback on you, how you have your Monarch money set up. I'd love to help you. I do 60 minute consults that you can schedule me and um, uh, pay for the time that we spend together to go through all of your questions in Monarch, kind of talk through your unique situation and figure out how best to use Monarch in a way that's going to help you achieve your financial goals. You can schedule that in the link below in the description. Uh, you can view the services. Uh, that is just one of the services I offer. The other one is full on financial coaching where we are doing more of a deep dive on all of your spending, your goals, your short-term goals, long-term goals, and then creating a budget for you and then helping you actually facilitate that budget inside Monarch Money. I help you completely set up your Monarch. I do almost all of it for you actually. Uh, make sure your account structures are correct. Make sure that everything uh, is go is as automated as it can possibly be so you can maintain a budget for the long term. So if either of these services are interested, uh, interesting to you, you can go and click the link below in the video uh, description. But otherwise, please let me know uh, what questions you have about uh, transferring Mint. I'd love to help you. What, what What's kind of going through your head? What are the dilemmas that I may have missed in this video that I, uh, I'd love to help you in the comments below? So uh, let me know. Please subscribe, like, and thank you so much for watching.